Hi everybody, today we're going to do triangle congruence proofs. So I'll put these um, proofs on Google Classroom so you can print them out or you can just write them on your own sheet of paper. And we're going to do some proofs. Proofs can be hard, but um, just do the best you can and then we'll go over them together. Number one, given M is the midpoint of segment AC and segment BD. So we haven't really talked about a midpoint, but it means it's the middle of the segment, that it divides the segment into two congruent segments. So let's write that. M is the midpoint of AC and BD and we'll take it's given one at a time so if this is AC and M is the midpoint which two segments have to be the same AM and MC so AM is congruent to MC by definition of midpoint. The midpoint of a segment is the point that divides a segment into two congruent segments. So those segments are congruent. And it says it's also the midpoint of BD. So which two segments have to be the same? BM and MD. So BM is congruent to MD. So are the triangles congruent yet? We have side side. Does anyone see any angles that could be congruent? How about these? What kind of angles are those? Vertical angles are congruent. Vertical angles are congruent. So that's angle A, M, B. is congruent to angle CMD. M has to be the middle letter because it's the vertex. So now what method is this? Side, angle, side. So the two triangles are congruent and it's SAS postulate. It'll be one of our five ways. So we learned about midpoint right now, that it makes two segments congruent in the middle. Um, we're going to be using parallel lines on one of the proofs. And so you just you have to remember your alternate interior angles. That alternate interior angles um, theorem. When you have the alternate interior angle theorem, it's when it's like a zigzag or an N when it's like that, like this or like this, a zigzag, zigzag. Those angles are congruent because of the alternate interior angle theorem. That'll come up on one of the proofs, but we'll do it together when we get to it. So here's X is the midpoint of VZ, and V disappeared. So I'll make sure V is on the one that I post for you. Okay. Um, X is the midpoint of VZ and they did given twice so they want angle 1 congruent to angle 2 later split it up into two givens we don't do that very often so if X is the midpoint of VZ which segments have to be congruent XV and VX and XZ Vx is congruent to Xz, 
And what told us that? The midpoint did. So definition of midpoint. And then we're going to do angle 1 and 2 later. Okay? Does anybody see any other angles that we can mark congruent? How about vertical angles are congruent? So angle WXV is congruent to angle YXZ. X has to be the middle letter because it's where the vertex of the angle is. So look at this and decide why those are congruent. Which method is it? Is it side, side, side? No, because we have two angles. So it's either ASA or AAS. Is it the S in the middle between the sides? Or is the S opposite one of the angles? It's the AAS theorem. The angle angle side theorem. Here's another one. G and J are right angles. Angle G and angle J are right angles. When you have this upside down symbol, perpendicular, it means you have right angles. And we didn't do that on this one, but there will be one on the homework that talks about perpendicular. And it gives you right angles by definition of perpendicular. But this one just says that they're right angles. And GH is congruent to JK. And HI is congruent to KL. So let's see what that looks like. These are right angles. GH and JK. GH and JK. HI and KL. So look at that carefully. What method are they congruent by? If we did side, side, angle, it would be none. But these are right angles, so these are right triangles. So what method is it that only works for right triangles? Hypotenuse leg theorem. So it's going to be the HL theorem. So angle G, triangle, G, H, I, and triangle J, K, L are right triangles. Definition of right triangle. If you're going to use the H, L theorem, you have to say that they're right triangles. So um, because you have a right angle, that makes them a right triangle. And then we already have the H and the L, so it was a pretty short proof, HL theorem. But it shows that you have to say that the triangles are right triangles first before you can use HL. And then our last one for the notes is angle QRP is congruent to angle SRT. Let's see, QRP, that's that. Is congruent to angle SRT, that's that. R is the midpoint of G, oh, R is the midpoint of, it's supposed to be QS. I'll have to change it. QS. QS. is the midpoint of QS, so that means QR is congruent to RS. 
and then angle Q and S are right angles. So what method would this be? Angle, side, angle, A, S, A. A, S, A postulate. Just because they're right angles doesn't mean it's always going to be HL theorem. So we have the given. Um, R is the midpoint of QS. That means QR is congruent to RS. Definition of midpoint. And then we have angle Q and angle S are right angles. So angle Q is congruent to angle S because all right angles are congruent. So we have right here angle, side, angle. Angle, side, angle. ASA postulate. So I have a worksheet that I'll post for you. That's due tomorrow at 10 a.m. And some of you still need to do the homework quiz number 14. And next week is spring break. Something to look forward to. Okay, talk to you later.